Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you this pre-cal honors 6-2 lesson on vectors. In this one, we are going to perform algebraic operations with vectors, and we'll define what that means. And also, just as a real-life application, we'll figure out the new heading for a hot air balloon that gets hit by a gust of wind. Before we go ahead and define vectors, we're going to start with a little warm-up here. Pause the video and see if you can figure out what the difference is between speed and velocity, which are usually used interchangeably in the English language. All right, did you figure it out? So it helps if you've had physics, but speed is what we call a scalar quantity. A scalar quantity just has magnitude, no direction. So for example, speed. Um, if we're going 30 miles an hour, we're not telling you what direction we're going, just how fast we're going. Now velocity is something called a vector quantity. This is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So for example, if I say my velocity is 30 miles an hour, then I'm telling you I'm going 30 miles an hour in the positive direction, whatever that is. And this is as opposed to going negative 30 miles an hour, which would be kind of like going backwards 30 miles an hour. Now that works fine if you're only going on a straight line. Um, but in real life, we usually are going more than just back, forward, backwards and forwards. So for two-dimensional quantities, we represent directions with an arrow or at least this is one way to represent the direction. But this, is, can, this can be a little bit cumbersome, so another way of representing the direction of a vector is using something called the component form, which is this little funky a comma b in brackets that you see in that picture there. This means essentially that we have a as our horizontal change, that's our delta x, this is how far we're going left right, and b is the vertical change, our delta y. And this is just our change as we go from the tail to the head of the vector. Now, this is all well and good, um, but we haven't really talked about this other piece of vectors, this magnitude piece. So visually, the magnitude of a vector, the size of the velocity or whatever you're measuring, is just the length of this arrow. So we care about a little bit more than the direction. Um, I mean, we could have a shorter arrow going the same direction, but it wouldn't tell us the same length, the same magnitude. Now, algebraically, if you want to find out how big a vector is, you can just think of this as kind of like a triangle with an a side and a b side. And how would we find this third side? Oh, just square root of a squared plus b squared, the Pythagorean theorem. So this is how we're going to figure out the magnitude of our vectors if we just have an algebraic piece and can't just measure a picture. Now there's one other thing to talk about here. The symbol for magnitude for vectors is the absolute value symbol. The reason for this is that absolute value really just means distance from zero, which is pretty much what this length of this vector is giving us, just the distance from the origin here. Um, so for that reason, magnitude and absolute value of a vector are one and the same thing. Now that we've gotten the background story on vectors, let's do a few examples. For our first example, we're going to express AB, which is essentially the vector from point A to point B, in component form. And then we're going to find the absolute value of that, which we saw before really just means the magnitude or length of the vector. If you think you already know how to do this, feel free to pause the video and try it out. Otherwise, you can follow along. So to get the component form, we're essentially asking for directions from A to B. We need a horizontal change and a vertical change. To get these, we just need to subtract one set of coordinates from the other. The order is going to matter here, though. For component form, the order makes a difference. We need to do second minus first because we want to get from A to B, not from B to A. Um, so doing second minus first, we've got funky brackets and then 0 minus 4 for the x values and negative 1 minus 5 for the y values. And again, we put a little comma here to show that these are x values, these are y values. So that's going to come out to negative 4 and negative 6. So this is essentially saying our vector is going left 4 and down 6 to get from point A to point B. Awesome. Um, now one other quick thing to note here is this vector notation. You'll sometimes see textbooks where they use normal parentheses to represent vectors. I always use these brackets because it gets confusing if you have vectors and, and actually regular points in the same problem. Um, but you might see regular parentheses sometimes. Alright, moving on now for the magnitude. Remember we're just taking the Pythagorization of this essentially, the length of this vector. So we're just going to do the square root of negative 4 plus negative 6, both of those being squared inside a square root. So this is going to be 
uh, 16 plus 36, or 52 inside my square root, which if I want to, I can simplify that radical. This is really 4 times 13 inside the square root, or 2 radical 13. For our next example, we're going to take a real-life look at what happens when two different vectors interact with each other. So let's say we have a hot air balloon flying in a direction with a velocity represented as negative 2 comma 4. And then let's say that we have a balloon being hit by a gust of wind over here that itself is providing a vector of negative 3 comma negative 1. We'd like to know what the new heading of the balloon is going to be with both of these forces acting at once. So we're essentially trying to figure out what happens when we add these two vectors together. Now we could do this visually by redrawing the second vector at the head of the first one and then drawing another vector from the beginning of the first vector to the end of the second. And then this is our new heading right here. Um, now this is all well and good if you've just got these little short vectors and there's only a couple of them, but what if we had much longer vectors that were harder to draw? Or what if we had like 50 of these vectors acting at once? Then this gets a little bit cumbersome. So we would like to be able to do this algebraically, to add and subtract vectors algebraically. How could we do that? The key on this one is if we look at this visually, in terms of the horizontal, the u vector is taking us left 2, and the v vector is taking us left another 3 for a total of left 5. So it looks like we just took the horizontal components from each of them and, and literally just added them together. If you look at the vertical, u was taking us up 4, v was taking us down 1, we had a net of up 3. So algebraically, we can add these or subtract by just adding or subtracting the x's and the y's separately. Uh, pause the video and see if you can do that with these vectors. All right, so here's what that looks like, if you were wondering. Our new vector, u plus v, that's going to be negative 2 plus negative 3, comma, 4 plus negative 1, which, if we simplify that, is just going to be the vector negative 5, comma, 3 or simply left 5, up 3, just like we see visually. Bye-bye, balloon. We're going to do a little bit more vector algebra in this next example. So we have the vectors v and w and their uh, coordinates, their component forms here. So it's a good idea when you start these problems to replace the vector variables with their component forms, because you eventually need to have numbers at the end of these problems. So for example, this is really just 2 times negative 3 comma 7, still in those vector brackets. And over here, we've got minus vector negative 3 comma negative 9 over 3. Now the next question is, I mean, we, we've already added vectors together. Subtraction is probably not much different. But what's going on with this 2 and this 3 outside here? What do we do with those? It's kind of tempting to just distribute it. Um, and in fact, when you're multiplying or dividing a, con a vector by a constant, and only by a constant, that is exactly what you do. You distribute either multiplication or division. So for example, this first vector we could rewrite as vector negative 6, comma, 14. Pause the video and see if you can rewrite this next one. All right, so now we're just dividing both of these by 3. So this would be the vector negative 1, comma, negative 3. And I'm still leaving this subtraction out here. You could have distributed a negative 1 and turned this into a plus, but I like to deal with subtraction at the very end. So now what? Um, if you haven't already, pause the video and finish this one off. All right, so we're subtracting vectors. We're just going to do the x's and the y's separately. We've got negative 6 minus negative 1, or plus 1. And then we also have 14 plus 3, because we're subtracting negative 3. And that leaves us with the final vector of negative 5, comma, 17. Now that we've gone over how to multiply a vector by a constant, how do we multiply a vector by another vector? For example, if we have these two vectors, u and v, how do I do u big dot v? Now, this is a special kind of multiplication. Uh, this is called the dot product. The dot product, there's a special formula for it with vectors. You do actually end up multiplying the x's and also the y's separately, but you do a little bit more after you multiply those. So here's the formula. You're going to have, if you have two vectors, a comma b and c comma d, component forms, you're going to do a times c 
and you're going to do B times D, but you're going to add those two products together. So AC plus BD. So that's the basic idea. Pause the video and see if you can apply that formula to these vectors. All right, so we should be doing 1 times negative 4, and then we also have plus 3 times 2. So this is negative 4 plus 6, which comes out to positive 2. And positive 2, then, is the dot product of these two vectors. So just like magnitude, you get a single number out of this, not another vector. Now, the other interesting thing about dot product is that it follows all the properties of normal multiplication. It's commutative, associative, you can distribute dot products, so it all still works. And with this example, we have reached the head of our learning vector for today. Translation, lesson's over. Till next time, Mr. Sutton signing off.